Now it's time for our third reaction type. These are called double replacement or DR reactions. And for our third reaction type, there are three subtypes. And these are also going to involve all ionic compounds. And the question is, what happens when a container of potassium iodide, and that's gonna be this container right here, which is aqueous, is added to an Erlenmeyer flask, which is this name of this flask here with a funnel, uh, of lead to nitrate, and uh, that should be subscript. And what happens is, even though both of the solutions are aqueous and have no solid in them, when you add them together, you get a solid, and that solid is lead to iodide. And according to our solubility rules, um, all binary compounds of the halogens, so iodine is a halogen, uh, with metals are soluble except those of, and there's lead, and ooh, there's lead. So that's how you know that a solid forms. And that solid is called a precipitate because it rains down to the bottom of your flask or test tube or wherever you see it like rain or snow, it precipitates, it falls. And so that's why it's called a precipitate. And it is, a, all a precipitate is is a solid that forms in a double replacement reaction. And so this is, we got out the color because we wanted to show you this brilliant yellow color. And it's a cloudiness too, that's another way of looking at it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about how to write the overall reaction, the total ionic equation and the net ionic equation for the reaction that occurs for potassium iodide, which was aqueous, so these are the same two solutions from the last slide, plus lead to nitrate, and you will have to put these together. And we will have to balance this as well. And I'm just gonna put some lines here to remind me. Now, for double replacement reactions, so you can think of this like this. We know that these are ionic compounds. And so this is K plus and I minus. This is an ionic compound as well. It's made up of two ions, Pb2 plus and NO3 minus. And all that a double replacement reaction does is the positive of one goes with the negative of the other. So our two products are going to be the K plus here and the nitrate here. So let's see, how would we describe this? The ions switch partners. And of course, the positive still has to go with the negative, and there's only one other negative. And since this is a plus one, and this is a minus one, in order to write this compound, it has to be KNO3, which gets a line. And PB, which is two plus, and iodine, which is just minus one, so Ion switch partners, comma, write good ionic compound formulas. And what I mean by that is, this is going to be PB, oop, I don't need parentheses here, I2. PBI2, not just PBI, because the PB is two plus, and we know that because it takes two nitrates to cancel one PB. Now, those are good formulas. We have to balance, but we also have to figure out whether these are soluble or not. So we return to our solubility rules. Solubility rule number one says that all common compounds of group one, group one has potassium in it, Group one is going to be aqueous. 
And we get down to rule number three. Rule number three says all binary compounds of the halogens with metals are soluble except for PB. And again, we just went through this, but this is going to be our solid. So our process is switch partners to get the products, look at the solubility rules and decide which one of our products is aqueous or uh, solid, soluble or insoluble, and this is what we call our precipitate. And we still have to balance it because you can see we have two eyes over here and one eye right there. Uh, let's see. I think this is our most complex looking thing. And I'm going to put a one there. And then I'm going to balance my PBs. Since I only have one there and one on the other side, that balances my PBs. I'm going to balance my nitrates next. And this is the power of keeping this as a nitrate in NO3 minus. I have two nitrates here. That means I'm going to have to have two here. And now we've balanced all the ions in this. And now we see we have two nitrates. Wait a minute, sorry, two potassiums and two iodines, and we need a two here. And that is now balanced. And that's my arch nemesis for these, is I always get so excited to do the total ionic equation that I forget to balance. But I remember this time for the video, so yay for me. What is a total ionic equation? A total ionic equation breaks up all aqueous species into ions. And that's okay to do because they're all strong electrolytes. And we know that strong electrolytes, when they're in aqueous phase, are not Ki together. They're broken up into ions with hydration shells floating around. And so uh, let's start here. This 2Ki aqueous is really, and I'm going to go way over on the edge here, 2K plus aqueous plus 2I minus aqueous. floating around with their hydration shells in solution, plus 1PB, 2 plus, which is also aqueous, plus 2, 1 times 2, 2 nitrates, aqueous. Then I get to my arrow, and now I have an aqueous, so there's still 2K plus aqueous plus 2 nitrate. And you do need to have charges and phases for all of these. Plus, uh, and I don't need my 1. You can put it. But you don't have to. And this is my solid. And the solid does not break up because it's a solid. It sticks together. And that is my total ionic equation. Break up all aqueous into ions. Keep solids, liquids, and gases. And we will see, I think, all of these in time together. Because they stay together. They have bonds, as we will see. All right. Now for the net ionic equation, you're going to cancel anything that is exactly the same on the reactant and product sides. Cancel anything that is exactly the same on the reactant and product sides. Uh, I sort of said it like this, so I'm going to capitalize it. Exactly the same on the reactant and product sides.
So, for example, 2k plus aqueous, 2k plus aqueous, cancel it out. Because, and the name for things that you cancel here, they are spectator ions. So that is K plus is a spectator ion. I minus, 2I minus. I don't have a 2I minus over here, so I cannot cancel it out. PB plus 2 aqueous. Nope, no PB plus 2 aqueous on the other side. Two nitrates. Yep. Also a spectator ion. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And so now, cancel every, anything that is exactly the same on the reactant and product sides. Write what's left. Which is a fun thing to say. And therefore, make a little smiley face on your page right after that. And now let's write what's next. So, or what's left, 2i minus plus one, or you don't have to write the one. And this is my net ionic equation. The last thing to write is PbI2 solid. This is our net ionic equation. And if your question is, why in the world are we doing this? I ask myself that all the time. It is because this, these in the net ionic equation it only shows the chemical reaction. Right? All these things that we canceled out, the spectator ions, spectator ions watch the chemical reaction. They're floating around in solution with their little teeny tiny solvation shells and not reacting. They started as aqueous, they end as aqueous. Nope. And the net ionic equation only shows the chemical reaction involving the formation and or breaking of bonds. So it only shows the chemical reaction with its making and or breaking of bonds. And we can ask the net ionic equation, is this a chemical reaction? And if so, what kind of chemical bond formed? Here we have two ionic species. Here we have them united together as, a bond, as bonded. So this has formation of ionic bonds. Ooh, boom. Formation of ionic bonds. This is a true chemical reaction because chemical reactions make and or break bonds. Here we are making bonds.